Hey everyone, today we're going to build a live updating league table using Ember.js. All right, so this is what we're going to be building. Um, on the left hand side, there is a list of games, or the most recent games played. Um, these are uh, at random, two teams are picked, and a random score is assigned to them. Um, and those results of those games drive this table on the right league table. Um, and it's sorted by the number of points uh, and it tracks the number of games that a team has played, how many it has won, drawn and lost, and how many goals it has scored for and against, and the difference between that, uh, which is the goal difference. And it also shows the previous f uh, five games, the form for that team. So I'm gonna reload the page and this will start simulating another 380 games or so. Um, this is gonna be very fast. It's a very short delay in between uh, the game simulations. Modern Ember is lightning fast, so this is uh, really nice to see. So I'm using Ember 3.5, so that's Ember Data, Ember CLI, and Ember all on 3.5. So I'm going to create a new app, uh, Ember League Table. Okay, so if I run the app, Ember Serve. So the app is running on localhost 4200. So we get this little welcome page. So the first thing I'll do is remove this welcome message. So that's in the application template. So there are two models that we need to create. Um, one is for the team. I'll be a simple model with a name. And the second is for a game. So I'm gonna create those two models now. Ember generate model team and game. So the team is going to be very simple. It's simply going to have a name, which is a string. And the game will have a couple of other things. It'll have um, a home team, that belongs to the team. And it will also have an away team. Now we need to specify the inverse because they will have a different key on the team model. So this will be home games. And the inverse here will be away games. Um, we also keep track of the score. So the, the home goals uh, which will be a simple integer uh, number and there will be away goals as well so the goals that the away team scored and we'll also keep track of when it was played so that we can sort and this will be a date okay so that's our game model um, the team model needs a couple of other things um, it needs the inverse relationship for the home and away team. Um, so we will have, a, a, a has many, so team will have many games, it will have many home games. So ds.hasmany. And this will be a game. This will be a game. And the inverse this time will be what we call it here. So it'll be the home team. We'll do the same for uh, way games. It is a game and the inverse will be a uh, way team. All right, so I'm gonna start working on the skeleton UI. Um, something I always do now is install Ember CLI Tailwind, which brings in, oh, let me open up the repo. So it brings in Tailwind CSS, which is a really great framework for rapidly building UIs. Um, so I believe I have to restart the server. 
Okay, so if I go to the application template and just put in a little tag, let's say um, Ember Leak. What do we call this? Ember Leak table. And if I add a class to make it text blue, let's say, it should give us our blue. Okay, great. So it's working. All right, so we're going to create two components. One, uh, this thing on the left, which will be, uh, we call it game results, and this on the right, which will be leak table. So I'm going to use generators for this. Ember generate component game results and leak table. Okay, so we can invoke them here. Uh, game results. And league table. All right, so these are obviously curlies. This is an old way of invoking Ember components. So I'm gonna use the new way, which is uh, angle bracket components. So you should see that should work, yeah. And we'll do the same for league table. The curly invocations. So we need a way to simulate the games. Um, there's a few different ways of doing this. Uh, I'm gonna create a service which is gonna be responsible for, on a timer, um, generating the games. So, Ember generates service, and we call this game simulator. All right, so uh, in its init, I'm going to just put console log for a second. Uh, we're going to inject this into the application controller. We don't have one yet, so I'm going to generate one. Ember generate controller application. Okay, and what we want to do is inject our game simulator service into this controller. So I'm going to import the service, inject a service. Okay, so it's called game simulator. Now, notice that we don't get our console log from the service because we haven't actually used this service. So even though we've marked it for injection because we haven't used it yet, it doesn't, uh, it isn't instantiated. So uh, we could simply do this and then you can see that uh, that does indeed instantiate the service. All right, so let's modify the service to uh, seed some teams. So let's just define some teams. Let's actually say And let's just do team two, team three, team four. So uh, for each of these teams, we want to create a team model. So let's just, um, uh, I'm going to use a for loop because we can use the, uh, the value of i as the ID for the model.
So we want to create a model at this point. So this dot store dot create record. Um, of course, we're going to have to inject the store. Okay. So this dot store create record, and we're going to create a team, and the name is going to be. Um, come from the teams array. I'm actually going to rename that to team names. Um, okay, we'll actually, because we're not going to persist this, we'll just give it an ID of I. Okay, uh, teams is not defined, of course, because I renamed it, so it's team names. So if we have a look at the Ember Inspector here at data, we should see we have four teams. So now we have teams. The next thing we want to do is simulate a game. So I'm going to do this in a run later, which we'll also have to import. And that's from Ember run loop. So later takes a this context and then a function which we'll call simulate game and then a number of milliseconds which in our case we'll do it every second. So uh, this function is called simulate game. Um, so I guess we want to get the teams. Uh, we want to pick two teams at random. Uh, pick two scores at random and then create the game so the teams so the teams we can get from the store peak all will give us all of the records currently loaded in the store for uh, of that type and then we want to shuffle them um there's an add-on i know i want to use later that also happens to have a shuffle function in it and um, it's ember composable helpers this is uh, one of a handful of add-ons that i basically add at the start of every ember project i work on and um, so it's got got a bunch of cool uh, handlebars helpers here uh, including shuffle and um, so we can use that in handlebars but it also has a function oops um, in here, in here, which it exports. So we can use that. So um, let me install that add on. All right, so we start the server. Okay, so now I can import this function. So it's in helpers shuffle. And then our shuffle teams. So I think we pass an array to it. That's all that's required and it will return a shuffled array. Okay, so our home team will be shuffled teams the for, at the first index and the away team will be the next. So let's just check if this is actually working. Okay, so we have a home team. Uh, its name is team three and the away team is team two. Okay, seems good. So the next thing we wanna do is randomly create um, a score. So there'll be home goals and this will be some function that we'll create, which will be 
random score. And the, it'll be the same with the way goals. So let's implement that function. Okay. So Um, to make it a little more realistic, uh, let's give the home team a little more of a chance of scoring. So uh, let's pass in maximum goals and we'll say that the maximum goals for a home team is four and for the away team is three. So the home team would be slightly more likely to win. So this will be, uh, we'll multiply maximum goals by math that random so math that random just gives you a random number uh, between zero and one so if we multiply it by five and round it that'll give us a uh, score and we should be able to let me just log this out so we're going to have uh, home goals away goals and this should give us a random score. Zero, two, one, two, one, one. Okay. So now we can uh, create our game. So this.store create record. And this time it's a game and the data is um, home team, away team, home goals, away goals. And play down, which we will give the current date. This little typo. Okay, so we should see a game, which we do. Um, so the final thing I'm gonna do is uh, when we simulate a game, I'm gonna schedule uh, a new game to be simulated one second later. So now we should see a new game pop in every second. All right, so let's... Uh, now that we have models, let's start passing some of this data into our components. Um, so I guess we could make the service have a list of games. So this will simply return the query from the store. Game and I need to import computed. So um, I should be able to now go game simulator dot games dot length. Okay, and that's updating. Great. So, all right. So let's pass those games into the game results component. Okay, and we'll do the same for the league table. Okay, so, so we'll do game results first. So this should have access to games. which it does, so we'll iterate over those. Each at games, as game. So I'll just output um, some data for each game. So we'll start with the home team. And the goals. Away goals. 
and the away team. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's add some style to our app. Um, get rid of that and I'm gonna add outer container and it'll have two inner divs. I'll give these the height of the full screen. Okay, and then I'll just move these components in there. So uh, one thing I wanna do is pull this out into a constant so that we can adjust how fast we generate the games. So we'll set it to something faster, let's say 100 milliseconds, and we'll use it here as well. Oops. And we'll use it here as well. And that should be much faster. Um, so we wanna cap the number that we show here um, so let's say we just want to show the first 20. So one of the things that Ember Composable Helpers gives us is a helper called take. So we can use this to um, just take a number of entries from an array. So let's say take 10 from games and this will restrict it to 10. Um, but what we want to do is show the newest games rather than the oldest first. So there's another helper called reverse. And this just takes an array and reverses it. So we can reverse the games array. And that should work. Okay, so let's change that to 25. And then let's work on styling this content here. So I know I div for each of them, make it light blue, give it some padding, some margin. It's gonna be flex and bold. So we're gonna have four divs. Um, the outer two will be flex one, so they'll take, they'll expand into the space. The inner two will be shrink. And these will be for the scores. Okay, that's starting to look better. Um, this should also have a border, but this time on the left instead of the right. Okay. Okay, and we also want this green header at the top. Let's give it a H2 games. Played is 
games.net. And this will have a class of text green dark probably. Okay, um so I have a typo. Okay, and I want to center that text. Okay, let me get rid of the red and blue backgrounds. And could use, I guess, a little bit of padding. Okay, let's start working on the league table. So um, I'm gonna use a table for this and what I'll do is just put some dummy data in there for now. So this is gonna have full width. Okay, so we want to iterate over each team. Uh, we don't currently have a list of teams, but we will pass it in from the application controller. Um, so we want to do something like this. Okay, so from the application controller, we will also pass in a list, an array of teams. which we'll get from our service. Um, so our service, uh, we'll also have a computer property similar to this. Okay, so if that worked, we should have uh, a row for each team, which we do. So now we can start filling in some of these rows. So this is gonna be the index so we can get the index from the each helper and um, these are zero indexed so we want to add one to them um yeah i don't believe that uh, ember composable helpers has it but there is a ember math helpers add-on which does have it So let me install that. And restart the server. So now we should be able to, it's called add, add one to the index. Okay. So for second column is the team name. Okay, and um, played. So we don't currently have access to that. I guess we want to do something like uh, games played dot length. So if I go to the team, uh, what we do have is home and away games. So really what we want to do is join them together um let me just quickly check the docs for computed macros um there is a union which takes a couple of arrays or takes a list of arrays and joins them together so let's use that uh what did we call it we called it games played. Well, let's just call it games. 
is the union of home games and away games. Okay, and we can see it's updating. So the next ones we want to work on are one drawn and lost. Uh, so let's do drawn first, games drawn. So we can import uh, another macro called filter by, which will allow us to filter all games where uh, we'll have to add a property to it, but let's call it is draw is going to be true. So we need to implement this is draw property on game. And this is going to be a computer property and it will have two keys, home goals and away goals. And it will compare them. So if if uh, if they're equal, it's a draw. Um, so I'll need to import computed. Remember object. And now oh, I need to update my UI here. Team dot games drawn length. Oh, there's an extra one, gone. So let's wait for a draw to come in and see if this updates. <laughs> what, there's no draws. Oh, here's one. Okay, so it worked. Uh, Man United and Team Tree drew, great. Okay, so let's do games one. So for this, um, I think what we're gonna need is the to split it up by home games and away games. So we can go home games one, which will be a property, and then there will be a away games one, and then we'll do a unison on them. So like games drawn, we'll use filter by on the games array, and we'll create another computer property called is home win and it will do the same for away games one and this will filter on is away win so we need to implement these two properties in game so it's actually going to be quite similar so let me just duplicate that a couple of times is home win is going to be if the home goals are greater than the away goals and is away win will be if the home goals are less than the away goals so um home games one away games one so we can add those together or create a unison of them and call it games one which is going to be unison Okay, so if that works, we should have a games team games one dot length. Um, oh, we have an error. Unison is not defined. So we're using this here. Oh, it's union, not unison. Okay, uh, we're not seeing one. Home games one, away games one, games one, union, home games one. Filter by games is home win, is home win. Let's just put a debugger in here. Uh, okay, 
we must have messed up our template. Yeah, that's a typo. That should be games one. Games one. Okay, our debugger's been hit, so that's running. Let's get rid of that. Okay, and that seems to be updating, so let's do games lost. And that's going to be similar, so it'll be home games lost. Lost games lost. And in this case, the home games lost is going to be when it's a an away win. Because when it's a home game for us and the away team wins, that's a loss for us. So this is is home win. So we have the games that we lost um, at home and away, and then we do a union of those for games lost. So now we have team games lost dot length. And this should be updating now and it seems to be. So Manchester United lost the first two. Oh, no, that's not right. Okay, so for some reason it seems like loss is not working correctly. Let me see if I can figure this out. Oh, is a way win. If home goals are less than away goals, is home win. So this is incorrect. Home win should be if the home goals are greater than away goals. So, okay, that seems to have fixed it. Um, so I think what I'll do now is add 20 proper team names. So we have a full set of data before we continue. Okay, so let's do the next three, which are all goals. So like we did here um, for games one, we will calculate the goals that were scored at home and then the goals that were scored away for a team and then sum them and that will be our total. Um, there is a sum computer property macro, which we can use um, if uh, you give it a string key, which is an array, and it will sum all the values. Um, but in order to use it, we have to put, create we have to create a computer property with that array. So I'm going to create a computer property called Home Goals Scored Array, and this will uh, come from we will call MapBy, which is another computer property which will, I will import. So this is going to be the home games and it's going to map the home goals. So now this will give us an array which we can sum. So we'll call this, so we'll call a new property home goals scored, which will be the sum total of this property above. Going scored. So now we can um, four. That's the goal scored. So team dot home goal scored. And if this works, this will give us a total, uh, which it seems to be updating anyway. Yeah. Okay. So let's do the same for away goals. going to be the away games and the away goals and then we will sum that array and then we want a 
And then we want a new property called goals scored, which is the total of that. So this will take two properties, home goal, goal scored and, uh, and away goals scored. And it will simply return and we'll simply return the sum of those. All right, so I am missing a return statement. So now that now they seem to be updating, which is good. Um, so let's do the same for goals conceded. So it will be something similar to this. It will be, uh, sorry, home goals conceded. And this will be conceded, 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 conceded. And this will be, for home games, this will be away goals, will be the number that we have conceded. And then we will sum that array. And then the away goals conceded will be, away games will be the home goals scored. And we will sum that. And then we will sum the totals of these conceded goals. So now we have goals conceded, which is against Okay, so that's updating now. Okay, and the goal difference. So that should be simple. Goal. So this will be goal scored and goals conceded. So let's update the template. Okay, that seems to be working. Two minus one is one, one minus six is minus five. Cool, so points. So this will be a computer property and it will, um, for every game that we win, we get three points. For every game that we draw, we get a single point. So we are interested in the length of the games won and the length of the games drawn. Sorry, I'm, I'm doing this wrong. Um, so for each game won, we get three points. And for each game drawn, we get a single point. So that should do it here. Okay, so Manchester City won a game. Yeah. Um, Okay, so it seems that we have an error here, like uh, Newcastle United 4, Manchester City 2, but Manchester City got three points and it's only played a game. So we have some uh, mistake in our, our logic. Um, I guess if we had tests, it would be pretty easy to spot it, but uh, let me just eyeball the code and see if we can figure it out. Actually, what I'm going to do is just comment out this so we get a single game coming in. And it'll be easier to debug. Okay, so Fulham uh, won the game, yes. But it also says lost is won, which can't be correct because they won it. And it also says that Everton won and lost. 
Okay, so one and loss is always returning the same. So uh, games won, games lost. Okay, so something's up with games won and games lost. Home games won, away games won. Ah, <laughs> okay, so um, we're filtering on all games and we're saying, give me all the games that is home, has a home win. Uh, but this should be on our home games, not on all games. So if I change this to home games, this to home games, and then, oh, sorry, this should be away games. So away games won, and then away games lost should be on the away games, and home games lost should be on the home games. Um, games drawn can be on all games because uh, a draw is a draw, no matter what, if you're at home or away. So uh, this looks better because Manchester United won that game so they won one they haven't lost one they scored two goals they conceded one their goal difference is one they got three points and Huddersfield played one lost one and um, scored one conceded two my negative one goal difference so that looks like it's working yeah okay so let's comment that back in and make these a little faster again Okay, so now that we have points, let's actually sort the um, the table. So there's another handy helper in Ember Composable Helper. It's called Sort By, and you give it a uh, the name of the property you want to sort by, and you can pass multiple, and then the name of the array. So in our case, we want to sort by points and that should sort by points so we should now see the well that's sorting the wrong way the teams with the most points are at the bottom so um, you can specify descending sort order like this so now teams that win the most points should be at the top. Um, if teams have got the same points, we should sort on goal difference. So if you've scored, if you've got a higher goal difference and the same points, you should be on top. Um, so we can give a secondary uh, property of goal difference. And like points, this will be descending. All right, so we're almost done functionally, uh, I guess we need to implement this, the, the form to show the, the previous five uh, results. Um, before I do that, let's actually style the table a little bit better. Taller. Okay, that's looking pretty pretty good. Uh, finally, let's do the form. So uh, we have access to team.games.length. So this will tell us the number of games that a particular team has played, you see there. So now we can go each, uh, we wanna take five from team games as game. So let's just put a G there for a second, comment that out. So we should see G's pop up as games have been played. Okay, so if the game is a draw, game is draw, we wanna show a D. Else, else if the game, so uh, we, we can use draw, we can't use this home win because we don't know if it's a, our game, is if we're playing at home or not. So what we can do is compare 
the winning team with our own team. So if the game, uh, if we add a winning team computer property, so let's add a winning team computer property. That's gonna depend on if it's a home win or if it's an away win. Uh, I'm also gonna specify home team and away team. Uh, we know that these are gonna change in our app, but uh, just as good practice, I like to be sure that all keys um, that we access, all of the properties that we access are uh, that could change are defined in the array of dependent keys. So if this is a home win, we want to return the home team. Otherwise, uh, if it's an away win, return the away team. And if it's a draw, we'll just return undefined. All right, so now that we have the winning team, we can compare it. Winning team that ID is equal to the team ID. So if it is, we know we're a winner. Otherwise, we're a loser. So you can see that the teams at the top have got uh, their last game was a win. And teams that win three in a row have nine points, which is, seems to be working. Um, let's see if some draws there. Yep. Okay, and it should only show five, right? Actually, what I'll do is I will speed this right up. Okay, and it only shows five at a time even though there's lots of games in there. So uh, we've one final thing to do uh, with this, which is to sort team games. So we wanna sort them by when they were played. So we have a, sorry, games played on. So we wanna sort them by played on descending so we get the newest first. And now that should be perfect. You can see they're coming into the right. Um, so let's finish up the styling on this. Get rid of the length. So let's create a span with some classes. Uh, give it some padding, some margin right. Uh, gray for a draw and give it a width of eight. And then I just do D in its own. Okay, uh, so let's do the same for a win and a loss. Except uh, if you lose, it's red. And if you win, it's green. Actually, I'm gonna make this a flex container. Um, make the text white in this so I can get rid of this class. text small and I'm going to center it and now they're all the same uh, width so the final thing I want to do is bring this to lay down to zero milliseconds and just enjoy how fast our ember app is 
All right, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, bye-bye.